It all started um, right before spring break, like Easter. It was like the Saturday before Easter. Um, and my dad actually noticed she had been limping. And, you know, of course, my whole thought is we've had Easter egg hunt. She's right. twisted her ankle or fallen on a hole. And I'm thinking pulled muscle, you know, and, and, and as a parent, it's growing pain. So, I mean, right. she's at that age where she's shooting up. It took maybe three or four days um, and she couldn't walk. We had made an appointment. Um, with our pediatrician on a Thursday and we never made it. Like the middle of the night, she wakes up, mommy, you know, and I race into her room and um, she's like, I need to go to the bathroom and I can't get up. And so I stand her, you know, there and she collapses. And oh. so I grab my husband, like we're, we're going to the ER. Right. And I'm thinking a fracture is probably, you know, a tiny little fracture um, and it wasn't. You know, they, they did the scans and the doctor says, he's like, I need to speak to you outside. I'm like, oh no, you know, cause you know, you see that on TV and yeah. you're thinking that's horrible. Um, and so he tells us, I think it's a tumor. Um, and we never went home. Like we came straight here and um, they, they told us it was osteosarcoma, which was a completely foreign word. Right. The first week was, I, mean, I was numb. You know, I just, I, all I heard was cancer and I didn't hear anything else. And, um, you know, how do you tell your five-year-old, you know, that you have cancer? And she's, I just remember the conversation and I said, um, after we had talked to Dr. O and we went back to talk to her and I said, you know, baby, you have cancer. It's been hard, um, especially when they tell us that this is a disease that happens to teenagers. That is very rare to happen to a five-year-old. And then they tell you that they're gonna remove her femur and that, you know, she might have more and more surgeries and more and more surgeries and um, to watch her walk again for the first time was better than when she was 10 months old you know yeah. just to see that happen again um, but it, it's been hard because I try not to, to do the research I try not to get online and you know um, but not knowing why um, why it happened um, has been hard and she asked me the other day she said you know mommy my, are my children gonna have this you know, and I'm like, as a five, what five-year-old needs to think about things like that, you yeah. know? And I told her, no, baby, because mommy didn't have it. Your sister doesn't have it. It mm -hmm. just, it just happened, you yeah. know? It doesn't mean that you're, that it's going to be passed down to your children. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm having conversations with her that I don't even have with my nine-year-old because those thoughts aren't in her head. I mean, yeah. that's what she worries about. How is it with going back and forth? I know, you know, I feel like we think of you as a local family, but really being two hours away means that when you come here, you don't go home and go to your bed at night. So yeah. you're the, you know, the families are separated, you know, with distance and, um, and, you know, talk to me about kind of what that's like for you guys. You know, two hours away really, I mean, it's not that bad, right. but when you do it every week, mm -hmm. um, it, it, it gets a little overwhelming. That's been hard on us as a family. Um, like I feel so close to Madison. Uh, because I'm with her all the time, mm -hmm. but I hardly ever see my other. I mean, I hardly ever see Riley, um, and so that's hard because I watch her grow up, and I had to do it from a distance. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I I try to get her to come up here with us, and you know, to do things, and she's like, well, I want to stay at the hospital. I want to yeah. go and do, and you know, so I mean, that's been hard mm -hmm. um, to be away from her. And to be away from my husband um, because um, we've always been so close. Like we, mm -hmm. if if we can't all do it, we don't do it, yeah. you know. And so now we we've had to adjust. And and life going through chemotherapy is just it's a different lifestyle. I mean, you just you make adjustments, and people look and they say, "How do you do it?" I feel alone. You know, I feel like I'm the only one that that's going through it. And to know that there are people out there like you guys who you know like. All the stuff you do with the races and you know I mean just the balls and and everything that she goes home with both of her legs you know I I get to watch her ride her bike again I get to watch her walk down the aisle without crutches or without a walker and she's gonna lead a normal life because people like you are out there and doing this so selflessly to you know to help other people so I'm thanking you because Aww. without you guys we wouldn't be where we are.